consideration is the eternal triangle. The setup to start the game with the 15 red balls triangled at the top of a standard billiard table. The pink at the apex, the black at the base, blue in the center, yellow, brown and green at the far end in line. Lindrum prepares for the breakup, which to a normal player means just a scattering of the balls. But to the champ, a prelude to non-stop scoring. Let's presume you know nothing about the game. Before parting a high scoring color, he must part a one point red each time. Bang goes one for a start. Lindrum being careful to hold position on the seven point black ball. With apparent ease, he trickles the black into the top pocket, coming back to another good strategic position on a red. His second red goes down, but Walter still has black in his eye, maintaining perfect position for the high value ball. Down it goes again, two blacks, two reds, 16 points already. Until the reds have been disposed of, the other colored balls are replaced after potting. Another red, <laughs> it's just as easy as that. Back into position for another black, and the break is up to 24 before his opponent can say, heaven help us. There are plenty more points left in the black, but just for the sake of variety, Lindrum gets into position further down the table. And with full control of the cue ball, he picks on the blue for a change. Practically a straight pot. So where are we now? Ah yes, the blue brings the score to 30. He's still in a good position to score more points off the blue if he wants to. But we've only booked the table for 10 minutes, so we'll hurry along. The six points of the pink catches his eye, and it's a goner. You can take our word for it that Walter eliminates nearly all the reds until there are only this red and the colors left. Now the game is to pot the colors in rotation from the lowest value upwards. The two point yellow goes down with ease, but Lindrum has perfect position on the green. Three points there, then the cue ball falls back under remote control to pot the four point brown. And here's where billiard skill asserts itself making the cue ball do what it's told. The blue is the next, but with each shot he considers the position of the next ball, and so on to the pink, while his opponent goes for a walk around the block. If he'd only missed the black, the other fellow would at least get one shot in the game. But no, there it goes. Every position is the result of forethought and science. How is it done? <laughs> Elementary, my dear Watson. You just put the fluence on the cue ball to draw back into position for the next shot. And how's this black along the cushion? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. And here's a snooker. The object ball is hidden from the cue ball. Walter makes the cue ball jump the obstruction to hit the object ball, saving forfeit points. And now in slow motion. There's no deception. Same result. To avoid a snooker is an art itself, but to be snookered and still pot two balls is really something. Walter Lindrum's uncanny billiard sense comes to his aid when the jaws of the pockets snooker one ball from the other. Down it goes after a little great circle navigation. Another snooker. The ball he has to hit being in the center of the line against the end cushion. The snooker's cleared and Lindrum's bomb sight is right on the job. He's the Norton of the billiards game. And now the white is jawed to snooker him from the object ball. He'll never get out of that. Really, Walter, that's not cricket. <laughs> but it's snooker. He's got a hit red on the cushion, and it's a pushover. Snookered from the ball in the pocket mouth, Walter essays a five cushion shot that really retains accuracy despite its long journey, and pots the object ball without falling into the trap itself. If the table's not big enough, what's wrong with traveling along the cushion? Hmm, what's that? You don't believe that five cushion shot? We'll have it in slow motion. Well, it's all a matter of corresponding angles, something you can't learn in a correspondence school. The slightest fraction out on any one cushion and you're back in my class. Right on the beam. Of course, you also have to know the technique of putting on screw side without having a curly cue. In America, this is what is known as putting on the English. But it's a pushover to this Australian champ. A 120 degree angle around the triangle. In the ordinary course of events, one cue would be sufficient. But Walter uses two to display the shunting shot. The idea being not to let the cue ball follow in. 
just a gentle nudge is necessary. A triangle trick that Euclid never thought of. The rhythm is still jumping as he hits the cush and then hurtles the reds to pop the black in the end pocket. Like it again and slow? Why, sure. Same result. There's a ball at each end of the queue and they'll be potted with a third. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> you can't fool us. You had it pocketed all the time, Walter. When it comes to snooker, he's no palooka. Walter Lindrum, the champ from down under, whose tricks on the bays will amaze anywhere in the world. <laughs>